Hey everybody, yes, we're back. And it's Bob Lorenz, Jack Curry, and John Flaherty coming at you. We've got that great news coming out Tuesday night. Major League Baseball has a plan to get back on the field in late July. And we'll dig into it, guys, in depth. But Flash, from a player's perspective, you heard the news. What jumped out at you? Well, I think the players right away, the excitement level just goes through the roof, guys, because you, you look forward to having a season. And to be quite honest with you, all of these guys have been working out, but they're not working out with that same intensity that they know they're going back to spring training next week. So I imagine guys got up this morning, got their workouts in, probably a little more intense than they have been. And you're just trying to figure out a way. Am I in New York? This is going to be easy. If I'm not in New York, how am I going to get to New York? But you're looking forward to all of that. But at the same time, you're a little cautious on what is this new reality going to look like when we show up at Yankee Stadium and we begin spring training part two. Yeah, I think we're looking at an unprecedented, unusual season that's going to be in front of us. We all know the health and safety of the players and everyone around the game is paramount. The coronavirus is going to hover over it. But when you dig into the fact that baseball is back, John, I agree with you. It, it's a relief. It, it's a reason to rejoice. It's a reason to celebrate cautiously. And I think the team that evolves, adapts, and adjusts is the team that can win this season. Because every hour of every day, there's going to be something you experience that you've never experienced before in a baseball season. And you can't let those, whatever you want to call them, obstacles, impediments, distractions, you can't let that get in the way of you have to win a baseball game that day, however you can get that done. Yeah, Flash, I think that's what stands out to me is the difference for players, right? It's a different level of discipline now. As Jack mentioned, extraordinary, unexpected circumstances. Hopefully won't see anything like it in any season ever again. But if you're a player, you've got to find a way to adapt all these things, stay disciplined when, where you're staying, where you're eating, if you're on the road. What level of commitment from an athlete is that going to take compared to what they give right now? Well, I think, Bob, all athletes and players have this discipline about them that they know what their schedule looks like every day when you get into the rhythm of a big league season. So the health and protocol issues are going to be part of that rhythm every day for these guys. But I think they're going into it knowing there are going to be some positive tests along the way. And they're going to have to Jack's point. These organizations, these players are going to have to adapt and figure out a way to win that game on that night. I just think that the, the pressure is on these big league managers because how do you manage now? You can't manage with that long season mentality. And I might not throw my best guy out there tonight because we have to save him down the road. At the same time, you want to keep players healthy on the field. Uh, it's going to be an incredible balance for these managers and front offices to, to juggle. Yeah, Jack, we've talked about that already. The fact that it's always been a marathon, not a sprint for a season. It's a sprint now. It's 60 games. And, and to me, that's part of the excitement of this season. Again, we're not going to see anything like this ever again. So that's part of the, the new reality and a wrinkle that I think is going to be interesting where almost every game in a way is a playoff game. Oh, there's a ton of urgency to everything that's going to be going around every game that we see. And to John's point, I think a few things are going to happen. First of all, the teams with the best bullpens, you're going to lean on your bullpen heavy. This isn't an April situation where, as John said, well, let's, let's save Chapman and not use him today. So I think it's going to be the team with a stacked bullpen. I think roster depth is going to be vital. I think having a killer instinct is going to be vital. You're playing games in July and August. You better treat those games as if you're playing in October. And then if I was Aaron Boone on my wish list, I'd wish I had three or four Chad Greens, going back to that bullpen point. You want a guy who multiple times a week can give you multiple innings. So I look from a Yankee perspective, somebody like Loizaga and how important he can become. Someone like Luis Sessa, even a Davey Garcia, if he works himself into the mix, those extra arms are going to be so vital. All right, so Flash, let me ask you this. Jack mentioned some of the players who could have a big impact were maybe in a 162 game season they wouldn't How about the fact that for the Yankees they were scheduled to start the season without some players but given the coronavirus guys have rested up John Carlos Stanton Aaron Hicks James Paxton should all be back when the season begins 
in late July. How much of an advantage does that give the Yankees? I think it's a huge advantage from where they would have been a couple of months ago. But, you know, is Aaron Judge going to be a healthy player when this opening day comes? That's still a big question mark. And, guys, I just keep going back to, you know, in my mind, what if a guy like Stanton gets hurt and that's, you know, a three- or four-week deal? I mean, that's half of a big league season now. So it's such a a big situation. Um, But, Jack, I was thinking about when you were mentioning all of these things, you know, from a player's standpoint – these guys have to get off to a good start right away, right? I mean, they, it's not like, oh, okay, I got a couple of weeks or a couple of months. I'm a second-half player. I'll find my stride. You have to get off to a hot start right away. And if you don't, the organization has to take a look and say, we can't have the patience. We might have to make a move here that we didn't think we were going to have to make because we only have 30 games left in the season. So when we're going to be doing our shows, I mean, it's going to be so many things to break down and analyze it's going to be it's going to be fantastic it's going to be different and I know the traditionalists out there say oh it's not going to be a regular season I get all that I just think 60 games is fascinating and getting to the playoffs and how you get there is really going to be wonderful to watch we always knew 2020 was going to be different well once the pandemic occurred we all knew that so I say embrace what is in front of us a 60 game season could have a ton of excitement I use the word urgency, and I use the word evolve. And, John, you spoke about it from a player perspective. How about this? If you're a team that starts out the season 2-12, and you might have buried yourself. You might be done. And that's why those those first 14, 16, 20 games, whatever you want to say, that's why there is an urgency. And how about this factoid? The Washington Nationals were 19-31 and after 50 games last year and won a World Series. We all know you're not starting 19 and 31 and winning the World Series this season. You're not going to make the playoffs if you have that kind of long, slow start. Really changes the mentality. Now, one of the other things I wanted to bring up, there are some different wrinkles that we're going to see. And among them, and this is where I don't want traditionalists' heads to explode, keeping it under the microscope of a 2020 season only, in extra innings to help preserve players' health, speed up the games a little bit, A runner will start on second base. So, Flash, this is intriguing to me. I'm actually embracing it. I know it's getting away from the norm. They did it in the minor leagues, but now on a national scale in the major leagues, a lot of people are really going to get their first taste of this, viewers. And seeing this, I find that a little intriguing for this year. Yeah, I don't love it, but I'm with you, Bob. I'm going to embrace it and see what it looks like. And, again, I go back to managers and strategies. Does the sacrifice punt come back into play? which really hasn't been a big thing recently in our game. Um, the, the pinch runner, the speed factor is obviously going to be huge. Does Aaron Boone hold the Tyler Wade in a tight game, knowing that he might have a pinch running situation at second base and to utilize his speed. So there are so many things that go into it, it you know, and I understand the health and safety of the players and being able to manage bullpens. You can't have 16 inning games. I get all of that. So if you understand that part of it, you try to embrace it and see how each club is going to take advantage in that type of a situation. In a normal season, guys, I'm like John. I would have scoffed at this rule. In this season, this is not the year to complain about everything. If you happen to be on that maniacal, crazy side of liking to see pitchers hit, which I'm not on that side, don't complain about the DH this year. By the way, it's long overdue. Let's have the DH. And that extra runner, we keep using the word embrace it, And John brought up a great point. The player who will start on base in extra innings is the player who made the final out from the previous innings. Well, for the Yankees, if that's Luke Voigt, and you've got a Tyler Wade stashed away in the dugout, you're absolutely pinch running for him. You're you're going for the kill right then and there. That's exciting. That's baseball. That's what we've missed for the last few months. Don't be screaming at your TV that this feels like Little League or American League. Scream at your TV. I'm so happy that I get to see this again. All right, so final question for each of you. I'm going to start with you, Flash. Again, some of the new rules, no spitting, no tobacco, no sunflower seeds. You are allowed gum. Would that be tougher for you? Or on an off day for you, non-playing, you're going to be sitting in the stand socially distancing, which would be tougher for you to kind of wrap your head around? Well, I mean, the, the instinct right away for players, you know, whether you, you shoot tobacco, gum, or seeds, 
is spitting, whether it's disgusting or not, is all part of the game. And it was just something that you didn't even think about when you were out on the field. Um, so I think that's going to be interesting. But the whole idea of playing games in stadiums where there are no fans is going to be fascinating for me because I think on TV it's going to look and feel a whole lot different. But, but I actually think that pitcher-batter confrontation where, where you're just locked in in, in the battle – um, that's never going to go away. So I still think there's going to be intensity out on the field. It just might look and feel different from what we see on TV. And Jack, as we talk about doing things differently in this season, hopefully this season only, going to be a completely different perspective for reporters covering the game as well, the way we do it as broadcasters. And I wonder your thoughts. Isn't this a time for the broadcasters in the league to get creative in terms of how we cover these athletes ask them questions, et cetera. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think creativity is key. I, I think being clever, I think being intriguing, being interesting, I think knowing the players and having interviewed them in the past and knowing some of their habits and some of their routines, I think that will help you going forward. If you see an at-bat from DJ LeMayhew and he inside outs a ball to right field and you had a conversation with him about that a year ago, well, that's the time to resurrect that conversation. Here's what he said about why he likes to do that at Yankee Stadium. I keep using the word embrace, evolve, adapt. I think that's for all of us. We're going to have to cover the game differently. A lot of the interviews are probably going to be just like this via Zoom. But I think the fact that we have baseball back, that we have something to talk about, and that we have some clarity in front of us, I think that is a reason to rejoice. And guys, just about time to dust off the suits and ties. Let's just hope the slacks and the pants fit after, after lockdown. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Good to see you guys.